Welcome back to the Self-Esteem and Confidence Mindset Podcast with me, Johnny Pardo. Today, I welcome back a previous guest who gives such amazing value to this world. He's a great friend of mine. He's been a great mentor to me. And today, we're going to be talking about productivity, managing your time, mindset, psychology, and many, many more things. So welcome back to the show, Simon. What is up, Johnny? And I just want to say hello to your amazing guests. I had so much fun with you jamming last time. It is great to be here, Johnny, from the UK. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Simon, from the USA. Uh, just the fig I started to like pretty much everyone from the USA. So <laughs> just a quick introduction <laughs> to Simon, and then we'll go into our conversation, because uh, it's a topic that I'm very keen on having to uh, manage and manage several things and being productive but I know this applies to you as the listener as well in some degree because we all want to make the best most of our time so we're going to be talking about that today so Simon is he has many roles so Simon is a coach he's a LinkedIn strategist he's a father he he works in sales he has family time he has a busy professional life he works on himself he does a huge amount of personal growth so, Simon, you do, you do a crazy amount of stuff. So could you tell us a little bit about what you do and how you manage to do all this? Yeah, this is a great topic. I always get people asking about it because I've, I'm a father of three. And here's the thing is I love, I love my sleep. I don't mm. cut corners when it comes to my sleep. I sleep seven and a half to eight hours per night. Then I get up. I do my morning routine, which consists of meditation, visualization, uh, I do some content creation in the morning, I'll work out, do my cold showers, my affirmations, and then I'll just be primed and ready to hit the day. I'm in a sales role. I also have my own coaching programs. I have one-on-one -on -one clients plus two group courses right now. I also have a podcast that I put two episodes out per week consistently. Then I'm also, I also love to create time like I am right now to be on other people's shows. Uh, I do my learning as well. And then of course, I love to spend time with my kids. So that's kind of a rundown of my schedule. And um, yeah, there's a lot there. But I think that, you know, the thing I get most, I get asked most about is how do you manage it all? <laughs> and there's some really cool stuff that I wanted to talk to you about today that has to do with more around the mindset. But here's the cool thing is at the end of the show, I'm going to drop some value for your listeners. I've got something for them that they can take with them past this episode, but I'm going to save that to the end, Johnny. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll be checking it out for sure, because you're a man I can learn a lot from all the time, both for business and, uh, and in terms of your personal development. So yeah, definitely stay tuned for that because Simon always delivers, over delivers on his value. So excited to hear what you've got to share as well. So my kind of my first question, thank you for kind of sharing all that is, and this may sound like a, a little bit of an obvious question. We kind of touched on it at the end of our last podcast episode, which was a, a couple few months back now. And a lot of us are in this like busy, busy, busy culture, particularly you live in the USA. I live in the UK. We see it very frequently, right? So what would you claim to someone who, or say to someone who claims they've not got time? What, what kind of would be your response to that? I just kind of wanted to go over that point again. Yeah, I think that uh, the answer to that is we create time for what, what's important to us. Mm -hmm. And the first thing that I would recommend for people to do is to stop being reactive to time and trying to just like, assuming you only have eight hours of work or whatever, 16 hours a day, eight hours of sleep, stop putting into boxes and then trying to fill up like the busy work first and then leave the, you know, try and fit in what you truly want to do in the end. It's kind of like with money. There's a lot of similarities between money and time. And I can't wait to go into this with you, but like people, you always hear about, you know, you got to pay yourself first with money. And that means like, if you have a job or a career, like take your money out for yourself, put it aside before you pay all your bills. And the people are, there's a lot of people that don't do that. And they're just like, well, you know, then I won't have enough money to pay the bills. Well, why is it more important to pay the bills than to pay yourself? And so they end up paying the bills and they soak up all the money that they have and they don't leave anything else for themselves. So the people that don't pay themselves, ironically, don't have any money in the bank. And it's the same with time, right? We do all the stuff that we think we need to do and we fill up the time. We just like expand into it instead of like marking aside what we really want to do 
and then placing that first and then doing it and then allow, allowing the remaining space to fill up with all the, you know, have tos, the busy work, right? And mm -hmm. when you do that, like just you claiming and owning your time, that's a game changer right there. And it's so important. But I also want to talk about like the psychology or like wh whoever came up with like the 40 hour work week. And on this episode, Johnny, I just wanted to talk about like a few paradigms that we can poke some holes in some constructs that we have around time. And once you start questioning that you can really bend it. Mm, yeah, I'm excited to dive into that. And I love what you said about you know, making sure what I like the comparison you talked about between money and time as well. Like at the beginning of the day, you've got you've got you, you fill out what's important to you, for example, or how can I allocate the time I really want on me? And often we're in the, the cycles are not paying attention to that. So I'm really glad you kind of made that more conscious to us. And certainly and then the same with money, we we pay all the stuff that you know, doesn't light us up like bills and things like that. And we don't put money aside for us. So I really, really like what you said about that. So one kind of very simple question, but sometimes it, it's quite hard to understand. What's what's the difference for you between productivity and being busy? Uh, busy is just checking the boxes. So and that's what most people do is they mm. fill up their time with things they think they have to do. Productivity is being effective and controlling and managing it, just like with money. Instead of letting money own you, uh, be in control of money and partner with it. Same thing with time. And this is, I've got a fun, fun story to share with your audience oh, and how I kind of realized some of this stuff. So about three years ago, maybe it was closer to four years ago, I started getting into some of these routines and I was doing a lot. And I had a dear friend who, you know, we went to lunch and he's a guy that never has time. We're always struggling to meet up. Every year we'd see each other one or two times. And I felt like the relationship was pretty important to me, but I always felt like, geez, it feels so hard to get time with this guy. So one day we're at lunch and we hadn't seen each other for about a year. And I'm telling him like about my new morning routines and like all the stuff I'm doing in a day. And he's just like, I don't understand how you get so much done. And I, I asked him about his schedule and I'm thinking in my head, I don't understand how you don't do more. And basically his schedule consisted of work, working out and being at home. And then he explained to me, and this is huge. Okay. So he explains to me, the problem is, is when I'm at home, I feel like I should be working when I'm working. I feel like I should be working out. And when I'm working out, I feel like I should be doing one of the other two. So he never felt present with where he was and he never felt good about it. And therefore he always had this anxiety around time and he really wasn't doing a whole lot. So you and I have talked in the past about like some neuroscience stuff, like how your thoughts trigger an emotion in your body. So if you have a thought that is of lack of lack of time, the anxiety, you know, busyness, hurried, rushed, then you get that feeling in your body, right? You start to feel that anxiety inside of your body and you start to condition yourself to receive those neurochemicals. What happens when you live in that state for your whole entire life? Your body will accept nothing but that. So even if you have three things to do, your body and your mind, without you even realizing it, will fill up your schedule with a bunch of shit that you don't need to do. Hmm. Yeah, I love that. And it's funny you should say that. I just started the Think and Grow Rich with Bob Proctor, the legacy. And very much, I know we love this stuff. So talking about the the vibrations of the frequencies we can kind of send out from our, that's obviously a bit beyond that as well, but it kind of made me think of that a little bit. So yeah, now no, it's an interesting story that even if you, you, you'll find a way if that's kind of how you'll you tuned in to feel like okay no yeah, like think that. about how we all like when, when there's a deadline we always seem to hit the deadline yeah at like the exact time it needs to be filled that's what i'm talking about we're, <laughs> we're given a certain amount of time and then it always ends up getting done right like how often does it ever get done early and then we oh we've got all this extra time we always fill it up so why not pack your schedule of shit you actually want to do first and then let it hit the deadline even so with all the stuff that you're not exactly thrilled about doing it will get done if it's important it will get done and i love pushing the boundaries on this stuff i i'm always asking myself can i push it even further and the, here's the other thing that's crazy too is you can opt out of that feeling of anxiety and rush i would i would recommend too is to stop i'm very careful about my words i don't say i'm busy like people say that i've got you know you've got a busy schedule i'm, I'm highly productive I'm highly active. 
I'm highly engaged, but I don't, I don't even define myself as busy because busy to me is like what you were saying, like checking the boxes, right? Mm -hmm. Busy and not productive. Productive, it, the, the crazy thing is you can just opt out of those emotions that are tethered to anxiety. And I've serious, this is another funny story is like, there was a very important deadline at work and somebody was like, so, you know, it was very urgent, very pressing, very important. And she brings this matter to me and she's like freaking out. And I'm looking at her like, okay, well, I'll do this and this and this. And I could tell the look in her face was just like, don't you care? <laughs> like, and like, I would, I just mentioned, would it help if I was like frantic and stressed out? Would that actually even help this? Cause I, I can still make this important. I can still do steps A, B, and C to get this done without being stressed about it, without having that anxiety. In fact, I'll probably perform even better. So the th same thing is with time, all that like stress around time and that anxiety, it's optional. Like you can opt out of that. Yeah, no, that's right. Yeah, very true. Like I, I can remember just always, I, it's funny, like as I kind of grew up my career and sort of went up the pay grade, I realized I was just managing things better. And I remember just like cramming in really non-important tasks in my early, you know, my early 20s and stuff like that in my early project management. And it's like, I got to do this, this and this. And these are like mm -hmm. tiny things like photocopy leaflets and stuff like that. And I was like freaking out about it. So get it is your response to or, or look at the little typos and now. Yeah, I don't, uh, not that I don't care, but I don't care as much about like. But it's like, we're, yeah, you know. we're trained. We see adults acting like that ever since we're a kid. Yeah. So it's like from the beginning, we see adults all frantic and stressed out about stuff that are that is urgent. So we act that way, but we, there, we really don't need to. And it, when you have that realization that you can detach from it, the cool thing too is like, here's another analogy between time and money. This will make a lot of sense. Mm. So you and I both know people who, who have millions of dollars, maybe even billions of dollars that they, they don't feel wealthy, right? They, they don't feel like they have enough money. So they're always living in a state of lack, right? Mm. So in their account, they may have $10 million or a hundred millions of hundred million dollars. And they're always chasing more. They never feel like they have enough. They're always worried that they're going to run out. They're always worried that somebody's going to take it away from them. If you'll notice that people are the same way around time, you could have plenty of time, but like in my friend's instance, right? He, he actually does have a lot of time and he could do a lot more, but he's living in a state of lack. So that's what it is. That's what busyness is, is it's a feeling. It has nothing to do with how much time there is. Just like somebody who actually has a lot of money can live in that state of lack and they have that, they live in that internal state. So if you're always feeling like you don't have enough, what does it matter how much you actually have, whether it's time or money? And when you start realizing that, that's when it starts to really expand for you and open up. I was walking my daughter, you know, I've got so much going on even today, took time to go for a walk with them because it's so important to me. And I'm just like, you know, I wonder if I, I always think this, I wonder if I'll feel like time is just going by so slow if I'm just super present with them because to be stressed out about me, well, I have to be back in 10 minutes because I've got all this stuff to do. So I'll literally perceive it like I have got nothing else to do right now. Like this time with my daughters is so very precious. The crazy thing is, is I actually perceive time differently because of that. Like my daughter, like I have a five-year-old daughter and a one and a half year old. I cannot believe they aren't bigger because I'm so hyper present when I'm with them and I savor those, those moments that it feels like it's been, it feels like they should be like 20 years old. Isn't that crazy? Like I actually perceive time differently. Wow. Yeah. That, that is big. Yeah. Just being so present and yeah, slowing down. That's true. And when you, when you talked about a minute ago, like, we, you could have a miserable millionaire and that kind of thing. I think Tony Robbins had a book money master the game and he like interviewed a hundred millionaires and he, his view, his hallucination as he calls it was that about five of them out of the hundred were like really happy human beings that weren't living in that state of lack, which I thought was really interesting. Right. It, it's so crazy because money doesn't have to do with how wealthy you are. And then like a step further than that, neither is time, time doesn't have like actual time 
doesn't have anything to do with how you feel about it. Like you can have a highly productive schedule and feel so abundant in time, but it's the overthink. And here's another thing too. I want to dive into this because like, I'm going to leave your guests with some really cool tactical tips around productivity at the end of the show. And, you know, it's, it's the psychology though, that is so important and, and working with hundreds of coaches. Now I see it so clearly the enemy of productivity. Well, there's many enemies like, you know, multitasking is one of them, right? Yeah. Distractions, another one of them, but overthink is a major killer of productivity. Mm-hmm. Here's the thing is I get, I work with a lot of coaches and they're just like, how do you get so much done? in such a short amount of time as like, cause I don't spend any time thinking about whether it's going to work or not. And people will question themselves. It, what's going to happen? Is this going to work? Is it not going to work? So overthink can be self doubt, imposter syndrome. Is this going to work or out? Or is it not going to work out? Or what if I fail? What if people think of me? Right? So they spend a lot of time thinking that back and forth. It's like ping pong going back and forth in their head. So it's costing them time, actual time that they could be moving forward. But here's the kicker too, is it's also depleting their internal battery because your mind is the most power consuming organ Mm -hmm. in your entire body. So if you're spending an hour, and there's studies on this, you spend an hour and a half to two hours in overthink per day. Okay. That's two hours less that you can be moving your forward, but it's also sucking your energy. Mm -hmm. So when you get home at the end of the day and you want to start your side hustle, you're wiped out because you've been thinking about it all day, wondering if you should do it or not. So a very important part around when it comes to the psychology of time is to understand that overthinking and self-doubt questioning things and not moving forward. It's, it's like getting in your car and hitting the reverse and going backwards. Mm. Thank you for sharing that. I, was, I didn't know that I, those studies it's, it's one and a half to two hours a day overthinking. Wow. Like that, yeah. that doesn't, it doesn't surprise me at the same time though. It's, and we like when I've talked with guests on here and we've we've kind of talked about that question we started off with with I have a lack of time and then we're like, oh, how much time do you spend on social media? You know, that that's you know, which are very valid and true points. Yeah, but they are. actually how much time we spend overthinking. Thank you for bringing that one up and how much. Well, that it's can- like your, your batteries like run dry. I have mm. a friend, a close friend, and he's he's been in some pretty toxic relationships and a toxic work environment. And I'm like, yeah, here's what you can do. Cause you're an expert in this. You can be, build a business. Here's the steps one, two, and three. All you need to do is do this. And he just get home at the end of the day and just be like, I, I can't even pull together 15 minutes to move it forward, you know? And it's because he's so wiped out with all the toxic stuff. So there's another angle too, not just overthink, but if there's people in your life that are extremely toxic, but we, we look at time so linear, linear, right? We're looking at the clock, the amount of hours that we have instead Mm. of like how we can be in a zone where we can be highly productive. And it goes the other way too. When you're highly, when you're passionate about what you do, when you have a strong why, when you feel purpose, that fills up your battery. That's what charges your battery. So imagine that if you get rid of the overthinking, you tap into your why and your purpose and you start seeing time differently, you start carving out time for yourself first and then charge that battery, like turn into a nuclear reactor. There's nothing that you can't do. You can be so incredibly powerfully productive just with those things. And we're not even talking about the specifics around strategy around time management. Isn't that crazy? Yeah absolutely and yeah it's and and, you know the the brain does take up a lot of energy so that's that's very very true especially when we get home and we're we're drained because of that overthinking so yeah and you're always i remember i used to i used to be djing in front of a crowd and it would be like a one and a half hour set and i get done and i'm just like i feel like i just did a bike race i don't know why i'm so wiped out but it's that mental stuff that's going on And most, you know, like even if you're speaking in front of a crowd, like that takes up so much energy, but think about how often people put that in the wrong, wrong areas. But what if you had like that passion behind you and lighting that up instead of sucking it dry, those two things right there, just like the mindset around time, total game changer. Yeah. Yeah, totally. It's, um, Certainly, it's you certainly when you've when you've got that energy as well, and you're not being sucked sucked of the energy. You're just like, ah, oh, well, I want to do this thing. I want to do this thing, and it can get really really exciting. That's that's very true. So, 
for you, like you, you talked about you do meditation and things like that and making, and we talked about making some time in your more making some time for you. Do you live by quite a regular morning routine? Absolutely. I think I did like 212 days of meditation straight. I just, I used to have one of those muse. I think we talked about this on the last uh, yeah, time we were on muse, the, yeah. the muse brain sensing headband. And it, I stopped using that, but I did like a, you know, and it wasn't for any particular, you know, sh- streak or anything. It was just, I enjoy it that much. So meditation is pretty much a, uh, it, it's a non-negotiable for me. Working out is too, like I will go months sometimes without taking a break just because I love it. And it, you know, it, it's funny because that's another thing too, is really solid habits, make it so you're not expending that energy because it's just like habit now. You're not like taking that like energy to get up and going, but meditation, that's a whole nother area that saves you time. People are always like, I don't have enough time to meditate. You know, like I'm so busy as, as it is without realizing that actually gives you back more time because then you don't overthink as much because you're letting your mind process things. It's just like, your, your brain is this supercomputer and you've got so much going on because we're in a different age than, you know, when, when our species was, was first growing up, you know what I mean? Like we were meant to be like sitting around for most of the day. And now like everything's in our face. We've got so much going on, like 10 different, you know, social platforms, emails, DMs, phone calls, all this stuff coming at us, TV. And it's like, that's what, where a lot of stress comes from. And the meditation actually allows all that stuff that's coming at you to go through those pipes a little bit easier. It just reduces that backup. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So um, meditation certainly like calms me. And I know uh, you, yeah, you, I regularly see your, your, your like videos or now and well now and then your videos of you meditating and uh, getting your mindset for the day. So is that kind of a set, period or length you meditate for does it vary yeah i do like probably 40 minutes see that's what's what's interesting all that stuff that i talked about that i do i don't skimp on my meditation so i do 40 solid minutes i think it started lower than that but i it i love it i feel so good i mean and i i don't try to clear my mind i put on music that i absolutely love and i'll just get myself let my brain just wander like I don't hold myself to a certain way of doing it. I just try to feel what I want to feel. Mm. Just try to like observe, like today, you know, I was out on my patio. It's so nice out there. So beautiful. And it's just like, I'm just like, you know, breathing in and smelling the air and just being so present, just looking at nature, seeing the trees and how abundant and expansive they are and just tapping into that frequency. And then I just put on some headphones and just like, just let my mind wander. It's so fun. It's like recreation time for me. Yeah, love it. Training the physical body and the the mental side to your physical and mentals getting warmed up already in the morning with your with your walk. Let me say that again: your workout and your your mental training as well through the mind and making it enjoyable for you, right? Um, I like what you said: let your your mind go and explore. And a lot of a lot of kind of when I first started, and I know this is a challenge for many people. It's like I'm getting thoughts; I shouldn't have thoughts. And it's like, no, you're a human being. So you should have right and and trying to fight that and people judge themselves about it. That's what's so interesting is they judge themselves about how well they do meditation and, and, you know, meditation is, you can use it as a tool to just observe your thoughts, to kind of step outside of them, which that links back to time management too, because if we start to be aware of our anxiety around it, if we start to be aware of our thoughts and how much drifting we do, then like, that's the, that's another step to help you, you know, rein that in and be a little bit more in control, put yourself first. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a great tool meditation. I love it. Didn't used to, but when you go through it and you try different things it can be really, uh, that was funny. Uh, just for your audience, he was making fun of people who take pictures of themselves meditating and post <laughs> on social media. <laughs> I'm guilty of doing that a couple of times, but I do love the topic and I do love making fun of myself. So that was all, that was a good one. <laughs> Yeah, I think it is that. I think it is that all. Yeah, crying, but it's it's kind of like all the time. If you're doing it all the time, I was like, "Are you really present?" So, yeah, time is. I actually had a camera crew come to my house. This was oh, crazy. Yeah, they 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 were filming me for uh, some promotion at work, and uh, they asked about my morning routine, and they came. They they they're like, "What do you do in the morning?" And I was 
um, walking through that. And they're like, can we do it right now? Can we film you? And I was like, sure. So we came into my office and I had three guys in my little office with cameras and lights just up in my face. And I started meditating and I actually like detached. It was so cool. I lost myself. I was like, whoa, where am I? Wow. This, yeah, that's how deep I can go, you know? Ah, okay. And it's, that's a really experienced meditator managing the focus of that. So I like it. Um, so one kind of question I'm quite keen on knowing, I know many people will be, is also we're talking about making time for you and we talked about productivity in terms of being set in a certain structure what your day should look like versus going with flow how do you manage that i mean do you have certain times that are set but you allow flow in other parts of the day how does it work for you yeah my schedule is pretty um dialed in and uh the what I'm going to share with your audience will actually have my schedule in it so they can take a look. But I'm, I, I kind of feel both ways about this. I feel like I, I could be a little bit more um, just unpredictable. I kind of leave, leave myself with big blocks to where I can work and flow around, um, you know, what I want to, but mine's very structured in the sense of like in the morning, I always have my morning routine. I always wake up at a certain amount of time or a certain time. I always go to bed at a certain time. I always spend time with my kids at a certain time. So I've got like ranges that I'm free to work within. And that, that allows me to flow. But I would say like, it's got to work for you. Like do what works for you, what puts you in the best state, what allows you to get uh, the things that you want done and put yourself first. But I, I do feel like habits, if you have strong habits, that's a very, that, that goes, it really helps you build the life that you want because you know, we always talk about willpower or discipline. You only need willpower or discipline for about 66 days, and then you can create a habit. And once you, the, you create the habit, like you're now saving that energy that takes, you know, to start up that engine, right? Like if you want to get a car going, <clears throat> it takes more energy to get it moving than to keep it going. So that's kind of how I feel about habits is if you, you have your schedule in a relatively similar pattern, it really helps you go faster and further yeah yeah it's, it's certainly uh some habits i can relate to when it's like difficult at first but then it gets into the way and it can save that brain energy because it's kind of just become part of you as well so that's a good point on the the 66 days as well do you do you regularly review your your like schedule like maybe on a weekly basis of how your time's being used and if it's being productive, is that something you do? Not really. I, I love using a calendar though. I love blocking out time. I love scheduling apps, but it's interesting because that's not, that's something that I had to acquire that skill set because, it, you know, I, I kind of shoot from the hip. <laughs> I shoot for what's in front of me. And that's, you know, I probably have a lot of room to optimize when it comes to things like checklists and stuff like that. Cause I really am not good with that. I just kind of go with my feels, but I think that <clears throat> calendar is definitely an area where I have cultivated that discipline. And so I, I use a lot of apps that correspond with each other and really keep myself to a schedule, make sure that like, if there's something that, you know, is on the horizon, like for example, you and me booking a call, you know, I need to get it in the calendar before I forget. If I've got a ton of emails coming my way, like I've got to be able to put something on the calendar and block that out. And then, you know, the other half to that is making sure that you stick to like checking it because it's one thing putting on on your calendar. I love that even, you know, booking this time with you, you had multiple reminders, stuff like that really helps you out. If you can automate <laughs> as much as possible, it's, it, it definitely helps out. No, it's good to know that automation's working. I forgot about it. <laughs> that's good. Uh, like yeah, that. see, that's a perfect example. It's something that you don't need to think about, right? Yeah. People get two or three reminders once you book a time with them, and that's taken off your plate. So automation, that's an area where people can step into when it comes to more of the strategic parts of time management. Mm -hmm. One, so a couple really more questions, but I know, I know there's loads more you could go into with, time management and that's kind of why why you've got something special for us as well but in terms of you know sometimes people talk about getting to burnout and overworking uh, and that kind of thing can kind of do too much a little bit have there been any times where perhaps you've got close to that or you've known someone perhaps who you've you've helped through that and 
what guidance would you give to someone who's perhaps feeling that a little bit? I think when it comes to burnout, that's a good top. That's a good question too, because I see a lot of people talking about burnout and experiencing burnout. I think burnout has more to do with you not being aligned with what you want to do. If mm. you're in a job that you absolutely hate, it seems like that could be something that comes up far more than someone who's really aligned with what they want to do. So for me, you know, I, I definitely hit the seams of my bandwidth and I feel that, but like I talked about when it comes to meditation of observing the thought, this happened, um, you know, this week, right? You were witnessing me launching a new course and that's a very, it could be a highly stressful situation. And the partner that I have with that, we're both kind of, uh, we shoot from the hip and just kind of go for it. And so there's a lot that needs to come together at the right time, but we, we set out to do what we need to do. And I, I remember on Wednesday night, just a couple of nights ago, I was just, I could feel it coming on. I could feel what most people would call as stress. And I just step outside of it. I'm aware of it. And I just say, well, I'm feeling this. It feels like a lot right now. I feel like I'm bursting at the seams, but this is natural because I'm pushing myself forward and going into new territory. Now, if I felt that way and I was in a job that I absolutely hated, that'd be a different story. So I, I, don't, I don't know if I'm the best person to talk about you know, burnout because I don't experience burnout. I experience being what I perceive to be at my the limits of my bandwidth. But even when I'm there, I'm like, well, how much further can I push? Is this just a state of mind? Because I felt like this before when I was doing a lot less. So it's really introspective for me. And I, I love thinking of it like that, but I also think we label things and then we feel that way, right? If you label yourself as burned out, mm -hmm. or if you, here's one that I see all the time is like, oh, I have imposter syndrome. So I never even heard of imposter syndrome until like two or three years ago. Now that's like the biggest word. Everybody has imposter syndrome, mm -hmm. right? So part of it is like, you know, being aware of how we label things. Like if mm -hmm. I'm burned out, I'm overworked, I'm stressed, I'm hustling and grinding. <clears throat> so again, going back to the, the words that we use, I definitely think we need to be careful about that. Hmm. Yeah, I love, love what you said about the words. And I actually was watching a video from Grant Cadone on, uh, who's like an absolute machine. And obviously you, you can see why he's a, you know, a billionaire. I think he's a billionaire. Maybe he's close to it, but you know, all his real estate and all the business he does and juggles so many things. And he was asked about burnout and he's like, I don't think it exists in my world. It was, it was just like he was saying that and he just saying burnout, you know, burnouts when someone's not winning. At, well, that just is in terms uh, Yeah, not I'm not winning. a huge, I definitely am not a fan of that guy. Like he, yeah. to me, just seems like the guy who's always running, always running. And then the chest puff of like, look what I did. Like yeah. I crushed, I crushed everybody else. I'm about like living life and having abundance, right? Yeah. Like I, I do not, I'm not down with the hustle and grind culture because I've seen so many people just running and running and running, running to what at the expense of like what you're missing out. So while I do believe in being highly productive, I, I'll be the first to say I'm not a huge fan of like the hustle and grind culture of just running for shit that doesn't even mean anything in the, the big picture anyways. I love my quality time with my kids. I love my sleep. Those things are important to me, but I also love paving the way for others and kind of trying out new things when it comes to mindset and psychology and human behaviors. And then, you know, I, that, that's why my podcast is the mindset hackers podcast is because I love to hack this stuff and then share like my data, kind of be like a, a scientist or a hacker and find this stuff out and help people out with it. Yeah. Yeah. Things that are really lighting you up and making sure they're in your calendar, not things that aren't on your agenda, things that are genuinely important to you, kind of that gives you your energy, right? I remember there's there's a great book called Indistractable, if you come across it. Um, mm, I haven't heard of it, but I love uh, the, the title of it. Yeah, it's a good title. It's a good title. It's um, Ner Isle. Uh, I don't know. I'm probably destroying his name there, but uh, it's actually quite a simple spelling, just difficult to say. But he um, he says in the book and his, his mini program, it's like, it's about making sure you're not just scheduling all this work, work, work. You're actually scheduling that quality personal time. And that time when you perhaps if you do want to, you know, just chill out and do whatever, you schedule that in as well. So it's about making sure you've got all the important aspects of your life. It's not just work. Yes, I love that. And here, if there's one last thing I'd love to say about this is 
be aware of the either's, or's versus the and. Like, I guess this is my big message is you can have it all. You can have time with your family and you can be successful and you can do it without killing yourself. Like I'm all about and, and I think that's why I do push it so hard is I, that's probably the biggest um, thing that I want to drive home is just like we, in our head, this is another construct around time is just like, I can either be successful or I can have time with my family. Well, why do those need to conflict? And that's another paradigm that we need to like question and poke holes in it. Do I really need to work hard to be successful? If you want, sure. But can you be successful and enjoy life and have time with your family and love what you do? That's an and mentality. So I'm really big on that. Yeah. And it's back to your own definition of success as well and knowing what that means. Absolutely. Absolutely. Success is not, well, it can be for some people, but I just, I don't believe most people, you know, they define success as money. I think money is definitely can be a really good part of that, but like, it's about living and thriving and happiness contribution, right? Leaving it, making your mark, doing what you want to do, having freedom. There's so many components to that. Absolutely. I think that's a great note to end on. Um, so thank you for sharing that as well. Uh, and, uh, so I love so, jamming with you. So absolutely. Fun. It's been great. Always, as always, always learning a lot from you. And that's why I wanted you back on the podcast today. So Simon, obviously you're a highly, highly valuable guy. Got There's a lot of value people can get from you and learn from you. So just a reminder, where can people find you? And also, I believe there's something else you'd like to share with us. Yes, I have a gift for your audience and I'm, I want them to be just to take a minute and just be, you know, sit in this, this gratitude of you taking the time to invest in yourself to listen to Johnny's podcast. He consistently puts out so much good content and it's so valuable, but you as a listener, just taking the time to listen to this is just amazing. You know, not everybody does that. So I salute you for that. Mm. Uh, here's where you can find me. The first thing I want you to do is to take out your phone that you're listening to this podcast on. And I have the Mindset Hackers podcast. Make sure you go on there and just hit subscribe. The other thing I wanted to do, Johnny mentioned that we have a little gift for you. So this has to do with the productivity, the mindset hacks around productivity. I want you to look in the show notes or go directly to this uh, website, Simon W. Parsons slash productivity. And in there, you'll get access to all of my mindset productivity hacks. You can get those the second, it only takes about 10 seconds to drop your name on there and you'll get an email with all my favorite mindset hacks around time manage, management and productivity. One last time, Johnny's gonna put them in the show notes. So you can click on that or you can go directly to Simon W. Parsons slash productivity. Absolutely. They'll be, will sure be, will surely be putting that in the show notes. So definitely uh, check that out because Simon always over the livers and he's got so many valuable things like his own routine and much, much info. And I'm certainly going to be grabbing that in a minute and <laughs> maximizing the best out of my life and my schedule uh, by learning from him once again. So thank you so much, Simon, for your time today and coming on and being an awesome guest. You bet, my friend. Thank you for having me. Awesome. So that concludes our episode for today. And remember, work on your self-confidence every single day.